Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. It stopped whirling, so I must be live. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming, and welcome back. I'm looking. Can Oh, K. Renee's Garden. Thank you. You've been here. I've been watching you. Nikki, the everyday life of an OCD-ish chick. TT's Pantry, I thank you. Maria Graham, can you guys put a one in the chat if you can hear me? A one in the chat if you can hear me. I want to make sure I'm loud and clear. Okay, so Maria Graham, yay! Your auntie's back. She's back, she's back. Honey, or as Mona sifting some soil says, bye bye. Boy, it was it was rough around here Thursday. K sings 55. Thank you for coming and welcome. I, I hope I forgot to ask you if you got your Cash App a couple of weeks ago. I sent it there. We had a giveaway and you let's see. Psalm 146, Miss Shirley won, and Our Treasured Home won seeds. So I just want to make sure that you got it. Hey, Dolores, thank you for coming, and welcome, welcome, welcome. So, you guys, I decided that today I would keep it simple, and I want to thank you each for coming back. I want to thank you, first of all, th th those of you here on the replay, the moderators, first-time visitors, people in the bushes. I don't always know that you're there, but leave me a message so that I know because the chat goes so fast. And for those of you who don't know, I have one eye that I can see out of. And it goes so fast, sometimes I miss things. A resilient dad. Thank you for coming. And money in the chat. Money in the chat. I'm going to work with Dolores, you guys, and get a money song. We're going to have a money song dancing. Throw the keys up to the Lexus. Take it round, 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 round. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope it's warm in the Bay. I've been outside today and it's actually a little bit cold. Unbiased. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. What did I say? Oh, I watched all your unboxings, your shorts and everything. Dolores, you, I've had you on. You're probably on in there now. I don't know. Nikki, I see. So you planting, I'm watching all of you guys. Kay's Garden, she might even be live now. I appreciate each and every one of you. As I was going to say, if you have any questions or any special requests, from now on, if it's not highlighted, if I don't see it, I will wait and save the last five minutes to answer any questions that you have about anything, anything in life. I'm going to wait until about 6.10 because I want to tell you guys something. I have on my 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 coat. Oh, guess what? I'm going outside. TT, you're back. So I'm going to outside physical therapy slash occupational therapy. I do when I get there, I do the life cycle for 10 minutes. And guess what? I'm up to 1.5 miles in 10 minutes. Then I go and get on the table. I do these stretches with a yoga belt and a, you know, the ball under my knees and I pull it back. For those of you who don't know, I had a complete left knee replacement six weeks ago and I'm kind of doing everything myself, hanging in there, uh, just, just trying to get back in rotation. So today's the first time I went 
to the park with Mr. Hershey in six weeks. I went past the past the garden. I can't wait to get in there. I can't wait to get in there. I had on my some comfortable clothes. But for those of you who are new or just watching and can't see the screen or something, GQUAT stands for Garden, Quilt, and Art Show. And I represent six living generations of people who are doing all of those things. And I'm on here to share those things with you guys. There's usually some quilts in the background. We paint. We do rocks, we make fabric postcards, any of the arts, even writing poetry. I'm in the process of writing a book about the eight generations that I've been living. And speaking of that, it is about 610 on Daddy's, Daddy's Big Swiss Army watch that can go in water and everything. Hey, Mike's Chaotic Gardening. So... I want to show you my garden. You can see part of it. Don't laugh. Don't laugh at Auntie Nana. Dun, 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 dun. Look what happened. I need your opinion. So six weeks ago, I had people helping me. I still have helpers. And somebody turned my refrigerator down. So it wasn't, I usually keep it like cold, cold, cold because it's usually packed where the doors are busting open and I need your opinion. Number one, should I cook these things, you know, chop the tops off or should I plant them outside and grow them into big onions and hope the groundhogs or squirrels don't dig them up? Um, what should I do or should I just cook them? Should I just simply cook them? Hey, sissy. Good evening, Joanne Stevens. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So these things are growing in the bottom of my refrigerator in the drawer. So something's got to happen. Give me your opinion. Number one, should I cut the green part off? Number two, should I bury the bottoms and grow onions? Number three, should I cook the whole darn thing? What what do you think I should do with them? This is about, oh my gosh, about three pounds of pungent, pungent onions. So I am unintentionally gardening. Unintentionally gardening. So let me go into the chat and see if I can see what you guys are doing. Because I'm looking, looking, looking. Hey, David Corey, break them onions up and get about four onions a piece. Now, that's a suggestion. I wish you were here to help me, David Corey. Somebody, somebody here to help, to help me. So... Any other suggestions? Grow onions. Okay. Everybody's saying grow them. Okay. And I have more in there that are not sprouted. I have onions galore. Cece's Texas Garden. I see you out there. I'm watching everybody's herb challenge, uh, WIG final challenges. And I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I'm weeping over here. But I'm giving y'all a chance to win this year. Mm hmm because I've got stuff growing out my ears, growing out the kazoo. So uh, Kaysings55, let me know, put a yes in the chat, please, if you got your got your cash app a couple weeks ago, because one other time I tried to send you one and it went to somebody else and they never, heard, they didn't give it back or say it was a mistake or anything, but it's all good. We're all in this together. And 8.30 this morning, because I cannot stand very long on my leg, I goes walking out of here without my walker, without my cane, but I had this big cart, and I had the biggest, biggest container in it. I had five containers in there, 
and let me see. Oh, uh, my Renaissance grandma, Lorraine T, Maria Graham, Karen's little garden, and one other person whose name I don't want to say on the air are getting packages. So I did get to the post office this morning. Oh, 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 you dropped a poll in the chat, Auntie Ellen. So I don't know how that works, but maybe it's in, on the community tab or something. You love my shirt? Oh, you know what? This shirt was given to me by one of my quilting friends. It was too small for her, I think, at the time. She's no longer with us. And her name was Miss Mary. She was the most amazing master quilter. She was with the old school that learned how to quilt and sew by hand. I have always sewn by hand. I learned how to sew by hand when I was like six or seven in the brownies in Connecticut. But her little stitches were so tiny. I don't have any of her work, but Auntie Joanne does. Hello, our treasured home. How are you doing? Thank you for coming and welcome. And I want to thank each of you Thursday when everything was going crazy who waited for me. You know, what had happened was I had four, four lives open. And each live, each live, I couldn't turn off. It was giving me a feedback. But I do have my emergency earplug, not the big old, not the headphones. I've got a couple sets of headphones because I didn't have any in Arizona and I needed them. So I got Auntie Joanne and I a pair alike. Oh, you spoke with Dolores already? Oh, okay. Did you win something? Okay. So everybody's saying hi to Dolores, who has been helping me so much. My new logo up in the corner. She helped me get together. I had the photos and she digitized them for me. And she showed me how to do some other things to put on and to put off. So let's go to... Let's go to the mail call, the mail hall. Well, a couple things because Mother's Day, Yankee Sister Homestead, hola amiga. I style me hardin oi. I didn't go all the way in the garden because I didn't have a cane or a walker to help me go down all the steps or walk around there. But I was eyeballing it. Uh, Sissy Joanne Stevens, I don't know. Something's going on in here. Hold on, because you're not showing up. I don't know. I'm not seeing you showing up, Sissy Joanne Stevens. Maybe because you're coming in from Facebook, that's okay. But I don't see you showing up, so I'll just leave that alone. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to say the things I... Wait. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thursday, you guys, I had the wisdom to know that I was overwhelmed by all the different things I tried to do. Oh, thank you, unbiased. Um, she's saying, answering my question about Joanne Stevens, and that lets me know that when people come in from other venues, like, say, TikTok or whatever, I'm not actually on TikTok at all. And Cece says, the wisdom to know the difference. I saw, Cece, I saw you with the girls the other day when you were trying to do something and it blew over the porch and you had to go down to get it. Yeah, that was funny. And the chickens and everything. That was funny. We just do, we just do the best we can. And that, that's, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. And when you know that you do no one any harm, you know, 
You just sit back and let it be. Oh, Anastasia's middle name is Serenity. Hi, Anastasia. Auntie Ellen says hello. So Mother's Day is coming up, you guys, and it's May 11th. So I got this pink fabric out. It's two yards of it. I have a family member who loves pink. Um, I have other people that like pink, and I know that. And so I'm going to be making something out of this in the near future. And it has pink butterflies on it and flowers up close. So now um, Joanne Stevens says she's unable to post on YouTube. But you can see the uh, the comments that others are posting. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if somebody accidentally blocked you or what happened. I'm sorry, sissy. I don't know how to fix it, but I will fix it. I will get it fixed. I will get it fixed. And this green, I don't know if you can see this green over here. This is a backing for a huge quilt. You say it needs to be purple. You're going to check. Dolores is going to check. Thank you, Dolores. So I don't know what's going on, sissy. But I'm starting to work on Mother's Day gifts because I'm slow, but I get, I get it done. So let's go to the mail. Actually, this isn't mail. This is something my, I ordered myself. Has anyone in here ever grown nutmeg? I have never grown it. I haven't been able to find any in the local stores. So I I bought some online. I already, Sissy says, don't worry, you see me and you hear me. So I have the little, the, that little long little grater for fine cheese and, and nutmeg. You never grew it? There are a lot of things I want to go. Shouldn't be able to block her since she's a mod. Hum. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. And meanwhile, we'll just keep kicking the can forward. I changed the background thanks to Dolores. Nutmeg is an herb. Yes, it is, David, but I'm not sure that it will, it's one that will grow here in Connecticut. In Connecticut, you have a limited amount. I'm not growing any ginger this year. Usually by now... My ginger is like two feet high, uh, two and a half feet high, three feet. When I'm able to put it outside in June, I get so much of it. But, you know, this year it's like, is it a bush? Is it a bean? I don't know. Mino sabe ki masabe, Mike's chaotic gardening. I'm going to tell you like t -Nox says and let farmer Google it. Let us know. Teach us. Teach us. I, I I never tried to. I never tried to. I know people that are growing coffee and some other. The most exotic thing, and I see why it looks kind of dark in here. I forgot to turn something on. But we have light. We have lots and lots of light. Mike says now he's going to do some research. I will reward you, sir. Oh, wait a minute. Dolores said, the survey says 89% said to grow, to grow the onions. So I'm going to be out there growing them. I have a lot of beds that have nothing in them because I haven't been out. I look great, Mike. Oh my goodness. It must be something. David Corey says, nutmeg is an evergreen. I saw you out there today, David with those little tiny egos coming up let's see if you can message maybe it's the setting you were on it's okay dolores it's my sister she'll be she'll be she'll be patient with me she always is she always is so you guys let's keep on moving because nikki comes on uh the chat comes on at seven o'clock and I want to go over there with the rest of you guys. So, I want to show you while I was looking for some things and taking pink out uh, for the family for the family gift. I want to show you a couple of little pieces of fabric 
that I'm going, this is actually just a pretty blue. It's going to go in a quilt like this one, which is a fat quarter quilt with big blocks. So the, the, the biggest block is 10 and a half inches. Then there's a one underneath it that's six and a half by 10 and a half directly under it. Then on the side of each block is one that's six and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. So sometimes you just have one or two pieces like this one. I know I can get a six and a half by 10 inch piece out of this. This quilt, this is actually going in a quilt for somebody who likes blue, turquoise, and purple, just like me, a mini me. Oh, David, of course, is no farmer here. Here's one I found that it's just a piece. It's just a piece. I love piece uh, quilts that are not matchy-matchy, that have something in there for no reason other than it was an Auntie Ellen's fabric or she liked it. Here's a beautiful piece of batik that's just sitting there. I'm going to put this in one of the blocks too of that same quilt. And here's one. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I like it. It's not going in the purple and blue quilt. It's not going in there. Then here's another piece of pink. It's a fat quarter. I can put that in there. Another piece of pink. That's a fat quarter. And that's how you put together I'm auditioning fabrics for a quilt. Oh, let me show you. Unbiased LLC on her channel featured a book by Sweet Ree. Uh, for those of you that she has written, I will be writing a children's book later this year and I will be self publishing. But this is a really cute book. I bought it for my great, great grandson, Ryland, Big Rooster. What's up, dude? I saw you with all those uh, vintage cars. Very, very nice. Very nice. So the book that I'm, one of the books that I will be writing, that will be a short one, will be my almost four-year-old great-grandson and some of his adventures and some of the things we do together, like saying hi and waving to people in different languages. So that might be what the book is about. But I did buy it. It's available on Amazon. And thank you. Thank you. You can get a, day, a, a layaway plan, David. You know that. You just dropped off the earth for your dear old auntie. You can get a layaway plan. Uh, Hudson can tell you. I have layaway plans. You can get a layaway. Anybody who wants a bag, a quilt, whatever, just email me and let me let me know. I'll make it possible. I thought somebody was knocking. It's my ice maker. I have an ice maker now because I have ice available for my knee. I will be sending other pieces of crochet lace out. So here's a bag. I actually opened it and quite a surprise. So I'm going to put it on my lap. Oh, my goodness. How sweet is this? You guys, it was National Crochet, Crochet Month. I crochet. I do all of the different skills. But look at this. It's a bunch of crochet hooks with a soft handle. I've never owned any of these, you guys. Never, never, never. A gift for you. Auntie Ellen, this is for your mom. I hope she enjoys it. From Felicia R. Humphrey. Oh, you guys, how sweet is this? How sweet is this? Mother! If you're watching in the bushes, these are for you. I will bring bringing them next week. As a matter, oops, of course I dropped them all. Of course I dropped them all. You guys, there are so many in here. Let me just try one. I've never, 
I've never used a crochet hook like this. I'm always making dishcloths. Let me try one out. You guys want to see me try one out? Mom's going to love these crochet hooks. Oh, and the and a whole a whole set, mother. Let me count them just to make sure your daughter doesn't accidentally keep any. Miss Shirley, thank you for coming. I've been seeing your shorts. I saw you in the wheelchair, the guy pushing you. One, two, three, four. I'm not sure what this is. I will look at it later. Maybe a counter or stitch counter. Four. Did I say four? No, that's three. And something else. Four. Five. Are you looking, mother? Six. Oh, these are needles for her to sew her pieces together. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I'm going to keep this purple one out just for a minute, mother. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And a stitch marker. Or is this fourteen? I don't know. But there are a lot of them. Let me try one out. I've never used one. So I always have thread around because I've, I had doctor's appointments every day this week, not because I was sick, but an old body is, thank you for posting the cash app, an old body is like an old car. You know, they nothing runs like them, but you have to keep replacing parts. Keep No, no keeping them, Auntie, I'm not. That's why I counted them in front of you witnesses. So this is a... This is a dishcloth that I'm knitting, but I always have another piece in case I meet somebody who wants to learn. So here's a piece of white. Let's, uh-oh, mother. I accidentally dropped one on the floor. I wasn't trying to accidentally keep it, mom. I'm putting, there must be about 15 crochet hooks. So, Mother Ann, let's try it out. Hey, Diversity Love, a.k.a. Perfection Baking. Thank you for coming, and welcome, welcome, welcome. This one already has a slip knot to start it, so let's see what it, do what it does. One, two, three, four. Let me make a quick little slip stitch, pull this tight, and one, two, three. Let's see what happens. Got to get back to the center. Okay, one. When you do it on, t on, the, on the camera, it always messes up, right? So, it's different holding it. Oh, she's going to love these. Okay, mother, it's coming, it's coming. I have all that purple thread from, from Hopi, our niece Hopi as well. Happy Mac, hello and thank you for coming. Dolores said 16 votes for planting these onions. I will get them planted and make a video. I have to start making, I haven't made any gardening videos in I want to say a month since I planted some of those some of those things for the for the herb garden for WIG but like I said I had 
people helping me for the last six weeks. And guess what? Some of them use my plant sprayer to put some chemicals in to clean it. And it killed all my seeds I was keeping wet. But I have plenty of time. And you know what? The important thing is for me to keep doing my squats, my leg lifts, my hip lifts, all the things I do, all the squats that I'm doing, two sets of 10, everything, you know, um, calf raises, other, other, other exercises for a full hour, and then 10 minutes of ice with a trainer. So I've been doing a lot and I'm going to get stronger and go down there. The worst thing that can happen is guess what? Your knee is an excuse though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, David. But I don't need an excuse. I have perennials out there. I have herbs and I have other stuff. There's no excuse. I can get starts. We're going to grow some food. Oh, we got onions for one thing. I have some potatoes out there I didn't even harvest last year. So some another gardener in Connecticut, when I came back from Arizona, Auntie Joanne is, oh, I know why she's playing like she can't get on. YouTube because I can't send her a link because she's supposed to show us her orchid tree that is in is blooming. Oh, that thing is so beautiful out in Arizona 9B. It is so, 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 so beautiful. So let me kick the can forward because I have some other things I want to show you. I have a big box of mail from my Renaissance grandma. And you guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you like if you like the video. David Core, if you were closer, you would have done that. And I would have been cooking you so much food, you wouldn't even be able to fit in them great flannel, those gray sweatpants that you love. Auntie Joanne said it's really blooming. So look what my Renaissance grandma. Oh my gosh. She sent me two pairs of jeans for my bags. But you guys, these, these look like they're brand new, but like the ones that are pre, pre-stretched. I'm going to, I sent you a package of my Renaissance grandma. It went out in the mail today, a sister package. So I'm going to open it like a little kid at Christmas tearing packages. Oh, oh no, these are brand new, brand spanking new. So see, the, now these are the ones that I find. She said she paid $2 for these. And look at the price. The price tag on here is $28. The ones we see in the thrift shops in Arizona and Connecticut are $28. They never, never mark them down. They never mark them down. Look, and these are small. These are small and long. So there are 24 waist and a 31 inch inseam low rise flare. Whoa. Look how long these are. Oh, and they're a different shape. You know what? These ain't no 24s. I This is not 24. This might be 34. And the length 31 is extra long for a size 24 waist. But we'll take it. Maybe that's why they didn't sell them and she got them for, for $2. It says, Origin Bangladesh. We don't care. We're getting ready to do something with these. That's what she said. Look at these. Now, I wear a size 14, and these things go all the way around me. So I know. I know. Auntie Joanne wears 24 jeans, 24 waist. So, no, <laughs> I know the difference. I know the difference. So, where this is a create and shot. <laughs> creating shot. Oh, well, why don't I? Oh, because I threw them over there. So would you guys like to see me debone a pair of jeans? 
Would you like me to see me debone them as if I'm going to make a bag? So these jeans are different. What I like, no, they do have a little bit of stretchiness in it. You want me to cut them up? Who wants me to cut these up? Gee, course, these ain't no 24. These ain't no sipping. <laughs> These ain't no, th no, 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 no 24s. These might be hmm, a 40, a 44. I'm just saying. David, of course, says yes. She going to buy for you giving that her government info. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to cuss it? And cuss it up. Cut it up. We're going to debone them. Let's go. Let's go, you guys. Let's tear something up. All right, so let's go and I'll grab the other ones on my way up and out because I have these really sharp scissors that I just got and I love doing things with them. Let there be light. How dare you turn off? So, there's a little bit more light, and I'm going to snag these other jeans, and you guys see where the logo came from? This is actually an embroidery file that I had digitized, that whole, whole big thing. I can't actually see the chat right now because I left my phone over there. Let me stand up so I can lift this heavy duty sewing machine. My handy dandy cutting tool. Hi, Bell. Okay. So let's get her down where we can see the table. Let's work it out. So, here's one. Oh, you know what? How about we measure it? For just what I said. These are, oh my gosh. Tw the, uh, 22 by 22 is 44. Remember I said these might be a 44? These are a 4431. So, this is a lot, a lot of fabric. Let's open the other ones. Who knows what size <laughs> these are. Maybe since they were made in Bangladesh, they thought that they were centimeters or something and not inches. Oh, Lord. g -Quad knows her stuff. Yes, this ain't my first rodeo, dude. Oh, these are giant also. These say 26. If those were 24... These are probably, whoa, these are even bigger. Oh, my gosh. Good, as Daddy used to say, good googa booga. I haven't thought of that word in a long time. Okay, so, yep, these are 46. Oh, my gosh. And they're the same style, so let, let's let her rip. Let me take, let me go to here and uh, Dolores showed me to do that before when I start working so that you guys can see the chat. Thank you, Dolores. Thank you as uh, Big Rooster. Thank you for learning me that I learned something new. You always learn something new, no matter how how old you get. So Marie Graham says it's a lot of fabric. You all, she's been sneaking in those stores, getting those $2 jeans that none of the rest of us can find. So this, I'm not going to cut these up my normal way because they've got these big pockets that come down here and they're doing, actually I am. You know what I'm going to do? Oh, and I want to show you guys something. You see these jeans up close? 
a lot of jeans. Let me hold it still so the camera can pick it up. You see that little orange thread? So I know that I will be sewing a lot of jeans in the future. So I do like to pre-wind my bobbins. I actually used to have a commercial. I used to have a commercial high speed, a commercial high speed thread winder, bobbin winder, because I had a long arm machine and I needed tons of them in different ways. And I specialized mine. You're excited. You did it. Wait till y'all see what auntie has a lot in store. I have a lot going on. So the other day, you know how I tell you guys a 15 minute challenge when you're creating, it could be doing anything. Look at this. What is it? One, two, three, four, five. So this is 25 bobbins that I have a, what's called a sidewinder bobbin winder. It's only about $25 put G material. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's what I want to show you guys real quick. But you see, I have some orange bobbins already wound. That was the point I was going to get to. They're already wound so that when I start, when I start with the jeans, I already have orange thread. Wow. Let me give you an update. Answering David Corey's question. So you guys, let me show you. This is a memory quilt. When my dad passed, I took some of his old flannel shirts, David. Some of these still have paint on them. And some of his old pants, jeans. This is a memory quilt. A memory quilt. But it was a little bit too short. It, 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 it was like a throw for a sofa or something, but I have had it on my bed for the last 10 years, no matter which bed it is. So those of you who have been here a couple of weeks, I cut up one, three of my old button down, those Ralph Lauren dress shirts like you wear to work, wear to the office, wear around, wear to the club, whatever. So I cut up, look. I cut up my work, my work shirts. My dad, my dad had what they call, had a construction business, what people call a blue collar job. And I love the fact that he used his blue collar job to send six of his kids to college to get white collar jobs so they could buy shirts like this. So I thought it only fitting and proper that when I wanted to enlarge this quilt of his, that I would use the my work shirts that I used to wear to work with my little pearls and stuff. But look what I did. I cut up a bunch of family jeans. So it's actually a quilt sandwich, David. And this makes a very heavy quilt, but you don't have to put the batting in it. This is denim with a piece of batting in the middle, cotton batting. For those of you who don't know what cotton batting is, it looks like this. I have seen people put cotton from the field, like a ball of cotton with the seeds and everything in it, in, in, in quilts. My mother told me that in back in the day when people didn't have money, they would put straw inside of quilts, old coats, whatever you have, just to... The, this is a utility quilt. This is not for show. This is not going to the county fair or the quilt show. Yankee sister, you in the bushes. And so I made my dad's quilt. So now it's like six feet tall. And let me see how wide. And this is what's called a rag quilt. I'll show you in a minute. So when I was a quilt show judge and we used to have to measure a lot of quilts to, for the space. You have to say what size space you're going to put it in. Let me show you. Let me put this back down. So you fold the quilts in half so you don't have to stretch your arms. So now this quilt is 52 inches by, by about 
by about six feet because I added a row to the top. But what you do is when you sew a rag quilt together, you put your seams on the outside. You see this? This was the cuffs of, uh, of the shirt. This is where that purple block was, Mike, and those of you who watch me. And I wanted to leave the, a piece of the purple block showing to show that this was a repair. And I used what I had. I used what I had. See where the purple, where it's covered? Yes. This is what you'd call a utility quilt. So what you do is, look, here's another. This is the only white shirt that I put in here. And to show that it was a shirt cut up. Look, more jeans. This was a pair of black jeans. And what you do is, after you sew these seams, you make them at least five-eighths of an inch. At least five-eighths of an inch. Normal quilting is a fourth of an inch. You see how I made these big, big seams? So you see the top, you see the batting, and you see the jeans on the bottom. What you do is cut them like at least a fourth of an inch. Then when, you, when they're washed, it frays it frays and becomes this that's why they call it a rag quilt joanne stevens i see you you switched over to youtube with your wrench or something happened i don't know so you guys i just want you to see that daddy's quilt as i put a row on the top a row on the bottom and it's like a weighted blanket for those of you who deal with people with anxiety, dementia, children, whatever. Joanne saying hi to Mike and to everyone in the live. So what you do is the final thing that you do when you're connecting these is you go around the outer border two times. Why? Because this is a heavy quilt. It could get snagged on a piece of jewelry, on anything. For those of you who would like to make a... Hold on one second. For those of you who would like to make a rag quilt, you can make them with scraps like I did with old clothes. Or you could, oh, it was blocking you because of the settings on YouTube, so you changed it. That might be what happened to the person who said she couldn't get on or she was blocked or something. Thank you, Dolores. My troubleshooter hero. So, uh, this is a graph I made for a class I was teaching one time. For anybody who would like to make a rag quilt and doesn't have time to cut up a bunch of old clothes, this, this quilt is six blocks across and eight down, just like the one I just enlarged of Daddy's. So, what you need, if you want to cut one, you can cut them nine and a half inch blocks and you cut 48 of them in three different colors i'll show you this in one second in three different colors and you can arrange them nice like this matchy matchy or you can make them like and this is just graph paper i just drew it out so that people could see it and you're going to need like five yards of fabric for the front five yards for the back and five yards of batting. It takes a lot. Rachel, I see you, mini me. That child is so much like me. Why do I call her that child? Because she could be my granddaughter. She could be my granddaughter. And she, she calls me Nana. A lot of people call me Nana or Nanny. Okay. So this is the back of the quilt. Mike, Mike, Mike of Daddy's Quilt. Remember when I had all the blocks of the shirt? I can't hold it up, but so high because I'm sitting and it's and it's heavy. This is a substantial quilt. I love this quilt. This quilt is only not in my bedroom because by me cutting all that fringe up, Lena Doyle Crafting, thank you for coming and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's cut these pants up real quick. 
let's cut them up. Cut them up, cut them up, cut them up. These 46s that they said were, I'm just going to leave this on here for now, just for giggles and kicks. So, normally what I do is cut them off right, right below right below the crotch but since this one has a pocket here i don't know this pocket we can cut this and make this into a bag straight by itself so i'm going to take out these handy dandy 10 inch shears that i just got on amazon rachel these are sharper than sharp than sharp they come already oiled. They have screws and everything. I'm, they're not paying me to say this, but these are some real scissors. By them being so long and so sharp to the edge, you say, why do you use the long ones? Yes, you can use the short scissors. You can use anything. But when you're cutting a lot, your hands get tired, especially when you're cutting through these thick fabrics. So these are sharp all the way to the tippity, tippity end, like a sword blade or something. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to leave this. Yes, you can see it. Leave this across. And so I want to see something. I can cut all the way to the tip. Normally, I leave the crotch part in, but this time I'm going to cut down. Why? Because we're going to separate this whole piece and cut through them. So this, wait until I cut the other side. I'm just going to fold it over and make it even. That's where I cut down for it to, or wait a minute, how about I do this? I'm going to put it upside down because I want to make sure that I cut this part straight. Um, for those of you who don't paint, that's something you do when you're painting a lot with watercolors or you're painting a, a stream. You turn it upside down so that you can get some balance on it. And I'm cutting this almost straight across, but not straight across because I want to get this other part of the seam in. I would normally do it with a cutting blade, but I'm just doing a quick deboning. So now we're just going to cut this part off. Why? Because we want to save it. And you don't throw anything away. So we've got this big pocket up here. We've got this big part. But look at this. Look at this, you guys. For those of you who want to make bags the easy way. Hey, my Renaissance grandma, you have a package in the mail, beautiful. Thank you for going. Those scissors do go through like butter. So I want you to see something. So these big old jeans that my Renaissance grandma sent me, she's just in the chat. You could just cut. Why don't I put it down instead of holding it up? You can just cut this part, you see just this part, in half. This part alone will make a bag, especially if you don't want those big old bags, or you can make a big, wide tote bag. It'll be shallow. All right, now, what are we going to do? We are, there's two separate legs. And we're going to look at these because these are not regular jeans that we're accustomed to seeing. I'm going to push this away to make sure I don't cut my little table cover. 
So, oh, and I want you to look at something. When you cut jeans out, the outer seam, the outer seam is usually flat. The inside that curves towards your, the middle of your body, your crotch curves in. So if you keep this part straight, it's like a grain line. It's like a grain line. I, I save these big seams. So what I'm going to do with this unique pair of pants, I'm deciding, actually, I'm thinking about it. First, I'm going to... First, I'm going to even this off a little bit. I've never seen jeans like this. We're going to keep this whole thing. And I showed you that orange thread. I'm going to be sewing this bag, whatever we do with this, out of, out of, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking because I really, really like this. So I'm going to cut this. Straight across. And I'll show you why in a minute. These are so long. You can do a lot of things with them. So. Look at this guy. You see this? This is all, almost already a bag. So I'm going to cut this straight down, just cutting off that little part that went out. You know where I told you where the in inseam is? So look at this. Put some straps on this baby and square the bottom up and it's already a bag. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do with this. Speaking of, hey, Barb Brownlee. Hey, Wellness with Frugal Mama. Thank you for coming and welcome. And thanks all you guys for giving the thumbs up. What I do, the bottom of the jeans... You can leave those there. I'm going to do this two different ways on this because I really like these jeans. So I am going to get a marker. Get a marker and a ruler. Hold on a second, you guys, because I just thought of the this. I didn't know these jeans were going to be like that. So I want to show you all the different things I can make with this. So we're going to get a ruler. This is a table with measurements on it. So I can see that I'm, I'm that I'm going to cut it straight. So I'm just going to cut even this part off and you can use whatever you have chalk pencil pen whatever this is just a pen i had nearby because we're gonna this pair of jeans are so big we're gonna make several different things out of it did you see how that cut down these little pieces i'm even saving them they can go into something later. This little one, I actually will throw away. This little one. So, this is flat, but it's a little bit too long for the bag that I'm going to make. I'm going to use this for the top of the bag. Why? Because it's already hemmed. Why reinvent the wheel? And I'm going to take the ruler, about 14 inches is what I'm going to make this one. No, nope. I'm going to make it 12. I don't want it too deep. 
and I'm going to draw another line. and cut these. So this, all I would have to do to make it into a bag so check this out. I'm going to get my handy dandy little square okay where'd I just put the pen I'm gonna take this and I'm not gonna make it so big I'm gonna make it like two inches by two inches because this is a two and a half inch ruler. Actually, I can't see that very well. So I'll get, oh, here's the pen. So I'm gonna cut this square out. I'm going to do the same thing over here and cut out two and a half inches. And what we're actually doing is squaring up the bottom of this bag. This is how easy it is to turn whatever you have into a jean bag. All right, so watch this just for giggles and kicks. I'm going to close the bottom of it just to show you guys how it's done. Just, just, just making it up. Let me see this one. Let me turn it back to zero. Turn the starts to turn flag. All right. So now I'm just going to turn it over and double stitch it, putting the strings in back so they don't tangle up. Okay, so we almost have a bag. So now we take this seam and add it to this one. I'm going to put one forward, one back. I just want to show you guys just a quick little something. Since we're so close to it and you guys were so patient Thursday night. So let's sew this side. Cut that little corner out. But just say if you had, you could be out camping. I have been, you know what? I drove a car one time from Connecticut to Arizona by myself. I know, Connecticut to, Connecticut to California. And when I got to Arizona, it was so blazing hot. It was so hot. I took my buck knife. I used to always have a little knife in my pocket from my homesteading farm days. You ever try to open a bale of hay and not have a, a knife, something to cut it with? On a farm, you always have to have a knife, something to cut with. 
wire cutters to cut a fence or something. You guys know about that. You guys know about that. I have had um, Mr. Hershey, as a matter of fact, my little Connie Corso, uh, no, I mean, not my Connie Corso, my little Shih Tzu that I have right now was in the woods in uh, North Carolina and his tail was long. I let him out to run and he got caught up in a piece of wire that a hunter had left or somebody left in the wood and he was tangled up and immobilized. You know, I had to get some neighbors to help me go find him. First of all, he was crying. He didn't come back when I let him out. And we had actually had to cut the wire and bring it in the house, bring him in the house so that we could give him a bath and cut the wires out. Okay, so look, you guys. You see this? I squared the bottom up. Let me cut this little string and check this out. This is already a little mini bag. Is it the fanciest? No. So we can make the top like this and turn it down, put a couple of straps on it, or we could keep it longer and put a pocket on it. Not the pocket we just took off because that would be a little big on it, just a smaller pocket. Normally I put the pocket on first before I square the bottom, but I just wanted you to see. Or I can make a lining for it and put the pocket inside the lining. So just gifted, hey queen, I am. I think I gift it to the lady that gifted me the jeans. I'm gonna fancy it up a little bit and show you guys on Thursday when I go live at four, just showing you guys what to do. And I'll cut those jeans up some more. We'll work on some more stuff. Does anybody have any questions or any requests? Because the chat is live, I encourage everybody to go over Karen's little garden. I don't know if I told you that your 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 package is on the way. Just gifted is saying hello, diversity love. Are you? Do you have that little sewing machine? Now you don't need a big one. You don't give a need a big one. But since uh, since you were you were here like back a couple of months ago, I just bought this little heavy duty singer just for this for sewing rough stuff zippers cutting up for these bags so this one isn't fancy but but my renaissance grandma if you'd like to have this finished and you keep a, a piece of this particular one let me know i'll finish it up and send it in the mail to you put a nice little bottom on it but i just want to show you guys do what you love, love what you do. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am, I will gift it. I will give it to my Renaissance grandma since she donated the jeans so kindly. And I will hook it up a little bit more. And you love it. You love the live Hermana. So get those old jeans out. You don't have to have a lot of money to make something a nice gift. This is going to be a nice gift. And I think she told me she paid $2 a piece for those, each of those big jeans, each one. So I'm going to put a nice little strap on it, a pocket, maybe a little bit of color on it. Maybe, uh, oh, remember the heart pocket that I put on my granddaughter's purse? I'll make a heart to go on here and maybe make it a shoulder bag so that it hangs off her shoulder, a crossbody bag. You guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for coming. Go over to the chat. Here's an I in American Sign Language, an L, a U. I love you. Egoamote mother, I love you guys. Thank you for coming. Coming, Nikki. Coming. Love you guys.